Okay, so we're coming today. Um, today is December 19th, 2019, Thursday. We are a week away from Christmas. So, um, just want to share daily devotional. Hoping that I can make this happen for you guys every day. All right. And um, so I like to take a lot of my material from version and Daily Bread. Um, really good resources for um, uh, trying to um, get close to the Lord and really walk the walk, walk the talk. All right. So, um, you versions, verse of the day, Matthew five sixteen. Let your, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And then um, I like to do a daily reading, Psalms and Proverbs, one in one. And um, today I'm up to Psalm. 136 and and proverbs 12 all right so and uh, 136 is one of these response type psalms you know that uh, you say one line everybody else says the other so um, and i'm just going to do it all here so all right giving thanks to god for his enduring mercy so give thanks to the lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. To him who by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. To him who laid out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endures forever. To him who made great lights, for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy and rules, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endures forever. To him who struck Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endures forever. And brought out Israel from among, from among them for his mercy endures forever. And with a strong hand, and with an outstretched arm, for his mercy endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two, for his mercy endures forever, and made Israel pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endures forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, for his mercy endures forever. To him who led people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures forever. To him who struck down great kings, for his mercy endures forever. And slew famous kings, for his mercy endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, for his mercy endures forever. And gave their land as a heritage for his mercy endures forever, a heritage to Israel, his servant. For his mercy endures forever, who remembered us in our lowly estate. For his mercy endures forever, and rescued us from our enemies. For his mercy endures forever, and who gives food to all flesh. For his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven for his mercy endures forever. And then Proverbs 12. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of wicked intentions he will condemn. A man is not established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who causes shame is like rottenness in his bones. The thoughts of the righteous are right. The counsels of the wicked are deceitful. The words of the wicked are lie in wait for blood. But the mouth of the upright will deliver them. 
The wicked are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous will stand. A man will be commended according to his wisdom, but he who is of a perverse heart will be despised. Better is the one who is slighted by his servant. Ah, better is the one who is slighted but has a servant than he who honors himself but lacks bread. A righteous man regards the life of his animal, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. He who tills his land will be satisfied with bread, but he who follows frivolity is devoid of understanding. The wicked covet the catch of evil men, and the root of the righteous yields fruit. The wicked is ensnared by the transgression of his lips, but the righteous will come through trouble. A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hand will be rendered to him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is known at once, but a prudent man covers shame. He who speaks truth declares righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. The truthful lip shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but counselors of peace have joy. No grave trouble will overtake the righteous, but the wicked shall be filled with evil. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims foolishness. The hand, the hand of the diligent will rule, but the lazy man will be put to forced labor. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. The righteous should choose his friends carefully, for the way of the wicked leads them astray. The lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting, but diligence is man's precious possession. In the way of righteousness is life, and in its pathways there is no death. And then, uh, also like to share a daily daily encouragement it says the original meeting was probably fear of literal physical attack how relevant that is today when criminals terrorists and opposing armies are a real threat. However, the fear of man's power goes beyond the physical because it also entails fear of his words, his presence, and his influence. In the case of some, their influence includes witchcraft and all its sinister implications. Fear of man may be fear of men, fear of an invading army, or just fear of men in general, but is often fear of a particular man or woman. Elijah was unafraid of Baal's 450 prophets, but when Jezebel's messenger arrived, he was afraid and ran for his life. Fear of man does prove to be a snare. It makes you feel cornered, shut in. It has a paralyzing effect, it limits our usefulness, it makes us hide our talents in the ground, it shuts our mouth so we become ashamed to testify about our Lord. How can we avoid the trap? By trusting in the Lord. For such faith is the antithesis of fear. We are safe in his hands, this world and beyond. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. And from Proverbs 29, Verse 25, the fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. And then we have the countdown to Christmas. This is the last week. 
And so this is a uh, devotion for today. It says, the story begins, what exactly is joy? To unpack it, let's go back to when God created the world. Imagine you've just been brought to life by the breath of God. And as God pulls you up from the ground, he smiles at you. From then on, whenever he looks at you, his faith lights up. Life's perfect until one day you do the only thing God swore you could never do. And because of this act of rebellion, you separate yourself from the one who knew you perfectly, loved you relentlessly. In an instant, what was meant to be eternal closeness with God becomes eternal separation from him. That's what happens in Genesis 1 through 3. But thankfully, it's not the end of the story. Even though humanity messes up, God makes a promise that he will send someone to mend our brokenness and restore our relationship with him. Christmas marks the arrival of God's promised answer when the creator of God, creator God, took the form of a baby and became God with us. Because of Christmas, now anyone who chooses to believe in Christ can experience a permanent joy that only comes from knowing God personally. Over the next week, we'll take a look at several biblical examples of people who exemplify this life-changing story, this life-changing joy. Today, perhaps, today prepare for Christmas by reflecting on what the coming of our Savior meant to people trapped in perpetual separation from God and thank Jesus for becoming God with us. And pray this prayer. God, it is because you became, you came to earth as a baby that I can experience unending joy. This week, help me to appreciate the birth of my Savior in a new way. Would the joy of the Christmas story leap from the Bible, transform me, prepare my heart today to receive your glory. And then from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From this time forward, even forever. Zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And from Isaiah 7. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Shall call his name Emmanuel. And then from our daily bread. <clears throat> Let's bring it up here. Today's devotional entitled Written on the Heart by Amy Peterson with uh, scripture coming from 2 Corinthians 2, 17 through 3, 6. For we are not as so many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. Do we being again, begin again to commend ourselves? Or do we need as some other epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, 
but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. And in the devotional, she shares, as a professor, I often asked, was often asked by students to write letters of recommendation for them, for leadership positions, study abroad programs, graduate schools, and even jobs. In each letter, I have a chance to praise the student's character and qualifications. When Christians travel in the ancient world, they often carried with them similar letters of commendation from their churches. Such a letter ensured that the traveling brother or sister would be welcomed hospitably. The Apostle Paul didn't need a letter of recommendation when he spoke to the church in Corinth. They knew him. In his second letter to that church, Paul wrote that he preached the gospel out of sincerity, not for personal gain. And then he wondered if his readers would think that in defending his motives in preaching, he was trying to write a letter of recommendation for himself. He didn't need such a letter, he said, because the people in the church in Corinth were themselves like letters of recommendation. The visible work of Christ in their lives was like a letter written not with ink but with the Spirit of the living God. Their lives testified to the true gospel Paul had preached to them. Their lives were letters of reference that could be known and read by everyone. As we follow Jesus, this becomes true of us too. Our lives tell the story of goodness of the gospel. When people read the letter of your life, do they see Jesus? Who are the teachers who have left their imprint on you? In the thought of the days, Jesus, I want others to see you in my life. May I decrease and you increase. And then I usually will close it out with a song. Try to find a nice worship song, something that speaks to me. Uh, and I encourage you to do that as well. Find one on YouTube. They have they have a bunch. One that I chose for today is from Bethel Music, uh, being shared uh, from the page of uh, Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen. Uh, it is well. Sound like it's a live recording. Um, and um, I'm going to try and, and link that to the page so you can just click on it and get to listen to it. Otherwise, uh, you can go ahead and find it. All right. You guys have a blessed day. And um, feel free to comment and or even leave, uh, leave a prayer request. Uh, I'll be happy to pray for you guys. Okay. Um, have a blessed day.